Thanks for stopping by to check out yet another episode of Vintage Audio Review. In this episode, guess what I'm going to talk about? You got it. The Realistic 31-2000 10-band graphic equalizer. Radio Shack first listed this equalizer in their 1981 catalog at a price of $179.95. It is 10 bands, plus or minus 12 dB per band, and it does feature something that's a little bit unique to equalizers from what I've seen. It's called a zero gain control, which are these two guys here. And we'll talk about that in a little while. The equalizer was brought to me because nothing was coming out of the left channel. I hooked it up and indeed the left channel was about 40 dB lower than the right channel. I did troubleshoot the problem and we'll discuss what I found it to be a little later in the video. I'll give a little tour of the equalizer and we'll take off the cover and see what it looks like inside and of course there is data and discussion about this equalizer so grab some popcorn or a beer or a cup of coffee or a glass of wine and uh, enjoy. So this is a close-up view of the realistic equalizer and starting on the left we do have the power button and it is plugged in and hooked up to a signal so I can show a few of its features. We do have the 10 uh, bands of equalization per channel, and they do have a nice uh, feel to them. They have a real nice slide, and they do uh, give a detent at the center. We also have a bypass control there, so that will remove the equalizer out of the circuit totally. So this right here is the EQ record button, and you would press that in to record the equalized sound. Right here we have a tape monitor button and you would press that in if you want to listen to the output from the tape deck, particularly if you want to hear recordings um, as they're being made on a three head cassette deck. So normally uh, those would all be out. So right here are the zero gain controls. According to the manual it says to, to restore the output level from the equalizer to the original input level. Three LEDs above each control are indicators for setting the levels. So the zero gain control is kind of cool. I hadn't seen that on uh, an equalizer before. And what it does is it measures the total output of all the uh, bands for that channel, or the, the level of the audio signal, and it tries to keep it so that overall you've got zero dB gain, even though you may be adjusting one frequency a bit more than the other it, when you measured the net effect of that across the band the overall level is going to be zero db if it stays in the green now i'm going to go ahead and move the right channel up a few db and if you look the led there came on and it's actually on the plus side of things so what you would do is you would turn the potentiometer to the left till it turns green so that would keep the gain overall at 0 dB. And the same thing if I went down. So if I bring it back to 0, I have to readjust it. It says it's a little weak. We come over there and so it's back green. And if I move down, so now I would have to increase it. The, the LED is off to the left. And so I would have to increase it. And there you have it. So it tries to keep the level or the loudness, the overall loudness of the signal at the same level. And so that's kind of a, a, a neat little feature. And when I go do some of the data testing, um, we'll see how well it, um, it works. This obviously is the rear of the 31-2000 equalizer. We do have an unswitched AC outlet right there. That is convenient. We also have the input to the equalizer right here, and this is the output of the equalizer right here. And if you were hooking up a tape monitor circuit, you would use these four jacks right here. This is the 31-2000 with the cover removed, and I kind of wanted you just to see the technology that they were using back in 1981, as well as point out the problem capacitor, which would be this guy right here. That was C111. I also replaced the equivalent on the right channel, even though it tested good, which was 
C112, which was this guy right here. They kind of laid this out nice to work on. This would all be your left channel here, and here's all your right channel here. And I also replaced C101 and C102, which was this guy right here and this guy right here, just because I thought it would be a good idea, although they both tested good. And that's about it on the inside of it. I wanted to explain the troubleshooting steps that I did to find the cause of the low gain for the left channel. And what I did is I scoped the signal right here and right here. This is the left channel input and the right channel input to this, this part of the circuitry. And I followed it along and when I got to right here, the emitter of TR119, it was much lower than at the right channel's emitter of TR110. Now let me point out that TR119 is actually TR109. It's labeled wrong on the schematic. However, the board has it as TR109 and it follows suit with the way they've done their numbering. Also, most of the resistors that I measured were not what they were in the schematic. They're different values for whatever reason. But once I started measuring things, uh, I did so I disconnected two legs of TR109 and hooked it up to my multifunction tester and the transistor tested good. And I checked some resistor values and they tested good. Eventually I got to this capacitor C111 and it was open. I replaced that. I also replaced the one on the right channel and it did the right channel tested good. And I replaced C102 and C101 as well, although they tested good. Once I did that and powered it all up, the gain was fine for the left channel. So that's kind of the, the, the story behind the low gain of the left channel. I wanted to demonstrate what is going on with the zero gain control function with the equalizer. And as you can tell, the LEDs are moving. The left LED comes on, the one in the center comes on, and the one on the right comes on for both the channels. And the reason for that is I am sweeping from 15 hertz to 30 kilohertz with my analyzer. And so the levels are going to change a little bit, which is reflected over here on the graph. You can tell that the left channel has more slope to it. Now there is a specification for the equalizer with all the controls flat with a 775 millivolt level signal applied to it and we do have that that's the minus 2.2 dBv is about 775 millivolts so under that condition the specification was you should have not more than half a dB of gain to minus 1 dB loss across the band from 5 hertz to 50 kilohertz actually and we're only going out to 30 but if we look we can see that our right channel does meet that there really is not much of a rise and it never really drops more than maybe half a db now the left channel from the peak oh i don't know if the peak's right here we're down maybe three db so two and a half to three db so the left channel is not quite meeting that specification I removed the left channel from the display to make things easier to see. So if you look at the zero gain control, the right one, you can see that the LED is flashing green in the, and it's in the center. And right now we have a pretty flat frequency response somewhere around minus 2.5 dBV, which would be kind of like the average across there. Now what I'm going to do is add some tone boost and we'll see what happens here. First, we'll go up 16 kilohertz a little bit. Now, I'll boost 500 hertz. As I'm doing this, you'll notice that the right zero gain control is now flashing on the right side. It's red, which means we have too much signal. And we'll get to that in a moment. And let's boost the 62 hertz tone control up. All right, so now we have. A frequency response that we dialed in and we're quite a bit above the average minus 2.5 dBV that we started at and our right LED is indicating that we have too much signal. So now I'm going to start turning this down which would be going counterclockwise and watch the overall response of the right channel as I do this. 
and we see a lowering so it's trying to get back down so that the average is around minus 2.5 dBV where we started and pr we're still needing to do it more oh now the green's starting to come on and right about there is probably fairly close it's going between a little bit low a little bit high so it's pretty close there and you can tell that we did not affect the overall shape of the frequency response we just change its absolute level which is the intent of the zero gain control function and I haven't seen that there may be other equalizers that that have a similar function I thought it would be kind of cool to see what the zero gain control actually did in real life action This first piece of data shows a 16 kilohertz tone at 750 millivolts being injected into the equalizer. And this is the THD SNR plot of it. And the only spec on this equalizer was that the THD should be less than 0.02%, which pretty much it is, at least on the left channel. On the right channel, it's a little bit larger than that, but not a big deal. In this plot, I have boosted the gain of just the right channel at 16 kilohertz by 12 dB, and it's showing an increase of 12.8 dB. That's pretty close. You can see the THD has gone up quite a bit at 1.6%, and the SNR has dropped down a bit, and the THD plus noise also has gotten much worse as a result of boosting the gain by that much. This piece of data shows the effect of moving the 16 kilohertz tone control slider down a full 12 dB. In this case, it's actually moved about 14 dB down. However, we do have an improvement of the THD when compared to the plus 12 dB slider movement. And here is the frequency response plot for when the 16 k tone control is moved to plus 12 dB of gain. Here we have the THD SNR plot with a 1 kilohertz signal applied such that we have 750 millivolts output. And we're at about 0 dB gain and our THD and SNR are looking pretty good at this point. Here is the THD SNR plot with the 1 kilohertz signal being boosted by 12 dB. And it's showing that both channels are showing about 12 dB of gain. The right channel is performing a little less than the left channel, but the THD at 0.2% for the right channel is not horrid at all. The THD plus noise for the right channel is about 10 dB worse than the left channel. Here we have the THD SNR plot at 1 kilohertz, where I dialed in 6 dB of attenuation, and it's fairly close to that depending on which channel you're looking at. And of course, the THD does improve when you lower the gain of the signal in the equalizer. And here we have the frequency response for the 1 kilohertz being boosted by 12 dB. Here we have a signal at 31 hertz, and it's just set up to give 750 millivolts or so, and we're showing about 0 dB gain. And let's see what happens when we boost it up a bit. So here I've boosted the 31 hertz signal up by 12 dB. And we're showing that it's actually more like 13 dB of boost. And you can also see the appropriate gain and the decrease in THD. Here we have the THD SNR plot for a 4 kilohertz input signal. And in this case, the zero gain has been adjusted such that we have zero gain out of the equalizer at a 750 millivolt level or so and you can see that the THD SNR is looking fairly good. Here the gain at 4 kilohertz has been boosted by 12 dB and you can see that it actually did boost it by 12 dB and the THD SNR looks pretty good. Here we have the THD SNR plot at 16 kilohertz adjusted so that we have around 700 millivolts output and then we're going to boost it and see what happens. Here is the THD SNR plot at 16 kilohertz with the gain boosted by 6 dB 
and actually it's showing that it did in fact boost it by 6 dB. Also our THD and SNRs are decent at this point. And in this plot I have lowered the 16 kilohertz tone control by 6 dB and you can see that it's showing about 6 dB of loss. Here we have the frequency response of the equalizer in the bypass mode and it really is not affecting the frequency response at all. Here we have the frequency response of the equalizer with all of the tone controls set to the flat position. Now the right channel in red looks probably plus or minus half a dB across the band. The left channel is looking maybe plus or minus uh, a dB and a half across the band. I first took the realistic 31-2000 equalizer up between a preamp and a power amp that I had set up and it works just fine. The only disadvantage is that as you change the level of the signal coming out of the preamp, it affects your zero gain control settings. So as you play your music either louder or softer, you're going to have to adjust the zero gain settings of the equalizer. The best place, of course, to have the equalizer installed is in a tape monitor loop. There your signal levels are more constant, and so once you get your zero gain control set up, you won't have to fiddle around with it as much. I thought it sounded well and worked well, and having a 10-band equalizer allows you to customize for room deficiencies or even recording deficiencies, more so than the standard bass and treble and maybe even a mid-range tone control has. Now, this is more useful, of course, for a vintage system, whereas a lot of your newer AV systems have a little microphone that will automatically EQ the room for you, but sometimes there may be a recording that you want a little bit more bass in it or take out a little trouble and the 10 band equalizer really can help you with doing that and I think it does a really nice job as far as not adding that much distortion into the music that you're listening to. If you were to find one of these things I think it would be a good purchase if it works and you have a chance to make sure that it doesn't have uh, scratchy controls and that it does indeed cut and boost the signals. As I said before, I have not seen a lot of equalizers that do have a way to adjust the gain more precisely that's coming out so you have more of a unity gain situation going on. Once again, I thank you for watching the video, and if you have not subscribed, please do so. And until next time, have a great day or night.